Hey everyone, welcome to part three in this DeLorean comprehensive brake rebuild series. In the last two videos, we took the opportunity to swap out the old fuel sender with a new one from DeLorean Go, and tested that one to make sure that everything worked fine before we got into the master cylinder removal, took everything apart, rebuilt it like brand new, put everything back together, cleaned and tested all the electrical before putting everything off to the side and removing the front calipers so they could be individually taken apart, inspected, and cleaned well, especially since the front left was seized. We had some parts that were repaired, but everything on the calipers were cleaned like new. The pistons were replaced. Everything was reassembled. With the calipers back together, new pads were used, along with all new associated hardware, shims, and springs. The flex lines on both sides were replaced with new ones from DeLorean Go. Everything was torqued back down to specification. Rigid lines cleaned and reassembled. Each of the rims were scrubbed and washed to remove all the old brake pad residue. And the wheels were locked back down on the rotor, completing the job. Now we're going to rebuild the back brakes along with the emergency brakes. We're going to get right into it. Let's get started. Already know from past experience, it's advisable to start with the breaker bar. So I'm going to loosen these bolts while the wheel's on the ground first. Then we'll jack it up. That jack stand is there for safety, highly recommended, though the weight is held up by the jack with a 2x4. So here's the whole unit. We got the e-brake in the front here with our regular caliper in the back. The e-brake's connected this linkage. The cable comes in over here. Access to the top bolt necessitates the removal of this e-brake. I know my e-brake's not frozen, but I'm gonna test it anyway. First with the ratchet, and I'm gonna let go. Very good, now without the ratchet, and I'm gonna let go. We're gonna do it close up so we can see everything's working, there's no binding. If it was frozen, I'd have to handle that first, but here it's not frozen, we'll continue. So these two bolts hold the e-brake to the caliper. We're going to loosen them. I'm going to use some penetrating oil and let that sit for a while. With a drift, I'm going to push back these two locking tabs that secure these bolts into place. Using a hammer, I tap gently to push these two tabs back down. Also, I'm going to remove this linkage by holding the top securely and turning this bottom nut to remove this from the emergency brake. Once it's removed, I'm going to put that nut and washer back on so I don't lose it. At some point, I turn these bolts out far enough that I could simply finger turn them out. Then I could lift out both with the locking tab. Then I could dislodge and remove the return spring. Finally, I could negotiate out the entire e-brake assembly, removing it from the car. And there we go. All the pieces back together, I bring it to the bench. Now it remains on the car is very similar to the front brakes where we have two bolts in the back that secure it to the car. I'll be adding penetrating oil to those bolts in three places, right here where the caliper meets the car's assembly right here where the thread of the bolt pokes through the other end, and right here at the head of the bolt, adding this application a couple times in the evening before I start the work. This was also done in the top bolt, but I don't have room for the bottle and the camera and my face. That night before, also started an application of degreaser to the entire e-brake assembly on both sides in tin foil, and then I went and wrapped that in tin foil, and that was just put off to the side on the bench for another time. Just like the front, we'll use percussion to break these bolts loose gently. And then just a couple turns to make sure I've actually broken it loose and not broken the bolt or stripped it out. I set up again for the top one, same process. This one proved to be a lot more difficult. There were several rounds of soaking with oil. When I hear squeaks like that, I become concerned, so I want to back off. So while it soaked, I made my way to the other bolt, now using a ratchet, and then revisiting this one at intervals with oil and the hammer drill. We can see that it did come out. Look at all the dust on the floor, but the percussion from this got it free safely. Penetrating oil is applied to this oil line right here. So I could carefully loosen that one up and remove it. At that point, the ratchet pulls out the bottom bolt from the caliper. And then the top bolt from the caliper is removed, supporting the caliper so the bolt doesn't bind. 
That bolt's gonna fall here and get stuck, that's okay. But now the caliber can be pulled right off of the car. This will be brought over to the bench with the emergency brake. That bolt that fell can now be removed. And both of these will go in my degreasing container. Any spilled brake fluid from this disconnect will be cleaned up and I'm gonna put a piece of paper towel under this line to prevent any more from spilling. I expected these lines wouldn't be any harder than the front. Let's find out. The other half's on the inside of the frame coupled to the rigid. I start by loosening that rigid fitting. This is accomplished with little effort. Hand turning the rest of it off. Place a towel under there before disconnecting. We can see it's no longer attached and it can be moved out of the way safely. I spray this side now with penetrating oil and allow some time for it to soak in. Using a deep ball 17, I was able to take that nut right off. I figured this is going to be to some degree rusted in, like all the others. So I'm going to spray a penetrating oil on this side. And I did try in vain to use my old method, but I don't have the room. This is just not going to happen this way. So I put the nut back on the end for surface area and used the hammer. I gave it a couple of wraps in succession, and that was able to drive it out. Removed the nut, pushed it through, no problem at all. So now I pull this side through and I congratulate myself, take a victory lap, because I'm like, this is the hard side. No. Now I gotta get this half out, which seems straightforward and is easier access as it would seem. I start off by applying the oil as usual to both the screw and the area we're gonna remove the rigid line from. I ran the box end of this wrench all the way up that rigid line. I was able to work it like that, which was easier. We got loose a couple times and then remove it by hand. And get my impact in there to remove that nut. Yeah, no problem at all. Now all I have to do is remove this nut and then the hose and I'm home free. Now before folks ask, why didn't I remove the access panel below and try and work this hose from behind? A couple of those rivet nuts are spinning free and it is what it is. I just don't have a choice right now. I tried gentle tapping, but there are no gussets on this crappy bracket, so tapping's a bad idea. Turning with vice grips didn't work either. That only works from the back. Ended up furnishing a puller from my shovel head engine, wrapping it around that bracket and the middle part of that puller goes right into the oil line, which pushes the oil line right out of that crappy bracket, and it worked. Some AMF technology for the win. This one portion of hose removal was the worst part of this rear brake job so far. Look at all the damage on this threads from all the work I did. Terrible. Things garbage. I'm done with it. Look at the design of this bracket, what an embarrassment. But I have to clean up this area now, remove any possible leakage of brake fluid onto the frame. Here's the old hose with the new hose. We're going to install half of the hose first into the car. And here's the kit for the nuts. And I've covered one side of the hose completely. The other side, I've got the anti-seize on the flats as well as the first couple threads. And I'm just going to push it right through into the other side of the frame. Drop on that lock washer and then the nut and just tighten it down by hand. This will then be finished off with a ratchet and this is snug down. That's it. The rigid line was held away for protection. I bring it back into position. Want to make sure it's still aimed perfectly straight or it's going to be very hard to screw on. And in position, I tighten it down with our wrench and then snug that one back down. It's complete. I placed the bag back on the new hose and sprayed the entire area here with detergent. After giving the affected areas a gentle scrub, I'm now washing the entire area down to make sure the brake fluid's removed. There was a lot of penetrating oil, so I couldn't tell what's what, so I wash away everything. I don't leave the car up on the jack for no reason, so until I'm ready to put everything back in the car, I put the tire back on and lower the wheel back down. It's evening now, and I'm applying oil to all the areas where the bolts are that are going to be open the next morning. We're going to see if I can open this without putting it on the vise. And it's nice the way this is set up on the other side, because the open end has a recess where I could pool up some of this oil in here the night before. Let it sit and drain inside. We can see the next day all that oil is gone, so maybe I got lucky and it absorbed into there, got in the threads. So we're going to try and open it up. We're going to use the impact. And these first two in the middle were no problem at all. The two on the outside proved to be a problem. They weren't coming off with this impact. So we're going to have to switch to plan B. This first one required minor percussion and it loosened right up. No issue. 
This second one, this loosened up, but it put up a hell of a fight. I stopped after I got it moving a bit and added more oil, let it sit. Came back, hit it again, and then went in the opposite direction and back and forth a couple times, and that got it loose. And I was finally able to get this bolt removed, but without any damage, and that's what was important. Before I pull those bolts, I want to take off this crossover pipe, so I'm going to apply more oil to this on both sides of it. And this will just be some minor percussion to tap it loose, give it a couple wiggles back and forth. Move on to the next one, same thing. And then very quickly, I just want to loosen the bleeder valve, and then once that's loosened, I'm going to lock it back down gently. Pipe is removed. We'll move it off to the side. Pulling the brakes now, I'm going to start with these two pins. Allowing these now to slide out. I'm just going to push them out with my pliers. There's the first one. The second one is held in by the weight of the brake pads. So I have to lift them up and pull this one out with the pliers. Now the brake pads are going to slide right out the bottom. The rear brakes don't have shims, just the pads themselves. And just drop them on the table as they came out. Now the four bolts can be pulled and the calipers can be split apart. These actually look really good for 40 something year old calipers. We're gonna have to take a closer look. But I dropped the bolts in my degrease jar. That was cool. Spray this a bit and then I'm gonna set this off to the side. The pads themselves seem okay and have even wear. There's still a lot of life on them for rear brakes, I think. These pins here could be fixed, but I'm just going to replace them. Again, this looks pretty spectacular. I'm interested to take off this seal here and take a look inside. So I'm going to remove the retainer ring. And I'm going to try to remove this dust cap without damaging it too much. I end up poking a little hole in it, but obviously we'll take that into account as we look at it. So I peel it off. And yeah, this is in very good condition. We can see a little bit of surface rust got in. That's fine, but yeah, pretty good. I'm impressed. And here, again, very good condition on the caliber. We'll repeat the same thing on the other side. This one, again, looks absolutely fantastic, except for the hole that I poked in it. Amazing. The caliper piston as well also look good, as expected. We'll push these pistons out now and see what we're working with. I'm going to apply a little bit of penetrating oil to this before I do it. I don't know if there's any benefit to it, but I figured why not. Look how clean this fluid is in here as compared to the residual fluid in the front caliper. Clean on this side too. Just to demonstrate, I'm going to take a piece of paper towel and put it in. We could see the color of the paper towel. This fluid is clear. Almost. Now I'll start popping the old rings out of the calipers. Have a look at those rings. I expect them to be good as the back brakes did function. This has been soaking in degreaser. It's time to have a look. This e-brake cleaner beautifully has almost all of the original finish still on it. As you can see, there's only one small section off to the left here that's rusted and lost the plating. I'm going to apply a very small amount of asphoric acid to this section and let it sit for a while while I work on some other things. As before, the calipers will go into a bag and then the bag is sprayed with degreaser both sides. The brakes then moved around, agitated, and sealed. Cleaning up the first piston just to have a look and see what we were working with. And there is some removal of the finish right here that's interesting, but I guess it didn't get far enough to leak. We're going to clean up this other one here and have a look. And this one, this one just looks perfect, except for directly on top. There's uh, no damage whatsoever. There's a little dirt here. I'm not going to reuse it, but that's impressive. So taking apart part of this e-brake for a quick inspection, I removed this pin as well as this flathead screw. And then this pin I push out with the drift, pulled the rest of the way out from the other side. 
And this cover I could just wiggle off. Yeah, I can't find my tripod this evening. That's what's going on here. So the cover's off. And everything in here looks good. This could be cleaned out and then greased where applicable and put right back together. There's an auto-adjusting ratcheting mechanism we could see working here as I open it all the way. And as I've been testing it, I've been closing it all the way in, so I'm turning the screw out a couple turns to open up this rod over here and extend the brakes. But now I'm going to close everything back up. Put this screw in, not all the way, but just get the thread started. I'm going to put this pin back through. Everything has to align up. It's a bit difficult because it's under tension. But then I'm able to push it in all the way to the other side. And then line everything back up on the other side to get it through. I gently tap it with a hammer to finish it off. Knock down the metal that may have raised a bit as a result. And I have a new pin that I'm going to use when it arrives, but I'm just demonstrating with the old pin. Also, we can see the area I've treated with osphoric acid no longer has rust on it. Also, bluing was done around the perimeter. And I tightened down that flathead screw. The return spring would sit like this is mounted on the car. And I check it for function one last time, but this e-brake is done, ready for installation. I'll just put that new pin back in when it arrives. The calipers themselves have been completely degreased. We'll have a look at them. They clean up really nice. This is the original coating on them with you know, some dirt on the coating, but... And right over here, these look good. Take a look at this one. This one as well came out very nice. Scrubby pad made quick work of cleaning up the inside of these calipers, and that's it. Just waiting on new parts. So we're going to end this video here. Hope you enjoyed this video, found it enjoyable, entertaining, and informative. Do me a favor and hit that like button down below. Helps me out a lot when you do. And hit that subscribe button for more videos like this when they come out. When the next video comes out in this series, a link will be posted in the top right corner. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Would you like to reply? <laughs>